Hello, welcome back. Got some cool stuff for you today. We're going to be getting into the binomial distribution. So yesterday uh, we talked about Bernoulli trials, which are uh, they have to be independent and the probabilities have to remain constant, have to have either success or failure. Um, and then we applied Bernoulli trials to find how long till our first success, which would be answered by the geometric model. Um, and then today we're going to answer the question of out of how many, out of a certain number of trials, how many would we expect to get uh, that were successful. So uh, we'll be continuing and simulating the geometric and the binomial distribution to see the difference between the two uh, today as well. So it'll be pretty cool. And we'll talk about our, our, our cards again. So uh, Bernoulli trials, in order for it to be geometric or a binomial distribution, has to be built upon Bernoulli trials. So we have to have only two possible outcomes, success or failure, and the trials must remain independent as we continue. Uh, our geometric PDF function basically says what's the probability that our first success was on the first one or the second trial or the third one. And notice that they're going to be always be skewed to the right because it's always going the most likely outcome will always be the first one because each one after that is going to add an additional failure that has to happen on the branch before we have our first success. So uh, if you need to read that, you can, and it'll tell you how you put it in the calculator and all the good stuff. Now the cumulative d density function will says uh, the probability that we have a success on on or before, like for instance, the fourth trial. So it could be uh, that it happened on the first one, the second one, third one, or the fourth one. So instead of adding together all four of those different PDFs, the probability density functions, uh, instead we can do the CDF, which we'll find it'll add all of them for us together, which is nice, very helpful. All right, so let's go back to the uh, the original question we, we ponder about quite a bit. So a couple has three children. What are all the possible outcomes of the uh, sexes in where the order matters? So in this case, we had, could have uh, three males, two males and a female. Um, the, there actually could be uh, two males where the female is the, the youngest, the middle child, or the oldest. There could be uh, two females where the male is the youngest, the, the middle child, or the oldest, or we could have three females. So those are all of ours. And we notice that these three are the, and those three are the same because if the order didn't matter and we were just asking about combinations, uh, then in that case, uh, we could say there were three ways that we could have one female or three ways that we could have one male, but there's only one possible combination of three females and only one possible combination of three males. And that's we'll be getting into combinations, uh, but not permutations because that's when the order matters. And then um, we'll be looking at the binomial expansion today as well. And Pascal's triangles, so lot, lots of stuff. All right, so are the outcomes equally as likely? So each one of these outcomes is the same probability of one out of eight. But if we say, what's the probability that they would have, um, they would have at least one of each. So uh, not all male, not all female, then that would be six out of the eight or a probability of having only one girl, that would be three out of the eight, right? So does the order matter? Uh, and if the order doesn't matter and we just ask a question, like for instance, how many girls did they have? They could have the sample space would be either no girls, or one girl, two girls, or all three of them were girls, right? So the probabilities of those of having no girls would be uh, one out of eight, having one girl would be three out of eight, having two girls would be three out of eight as well, uh, just really the same probabilities, right? And then having three uh, three girls would be only one probability. There's only one combination where that happens. So this is actually combinations, and it can be shown as n c x, whereas out of n, choose x. So for instance, if we have three children, that's like out of three, choose one. So how many different ways could we choose one out of three? Well, um, there's going to be uh, three different ways we could choose one, right? So uh, out of three children, how many different combinations could we have of one f of one female? Well, there's three of them. We could have, uh, she could be the youngest, the last one, the middle child, or the first. Um, out of three, choose two. Well, it's the same thing. How many ways can we have two females? Well, the first two, first and last, or the last two. Out of three, choose three. Well, there's only one way to do that, which is all three. Out of three, choose zero. There's only one way to do that. Um, which would be all males. So the probabilities of breaking these down are like three three um, events, event one, event two, and event three, which is the, the three different uh, children that they had. Um, it could either be male or female, and then male or female, male or female, and you see all the possible combinations of those. And then at the end, I put, so male, male, male would be here, male, male, female here, male, female, male, right there, you, you get it. Okay, so all of those are graphed out. We have all eight of those possible combinations and how they got there. Since these probabilities are all equal, these probabilities will all be equally as likely to occur. 
but there are three different uh, combinations of choosing one and choosing two, but choosing three and choosing zero, there's only one combination of those, which is kind of cool. All right, so the binomial distribution is out of in Bernoulli trials that we would have X successes. So uh, the probability of that is the combinations multiplied by the probability of that specific uh, outcome. Now, the, that specific outcome is gonna be um, consistent and exactly the same because the probability is 50-50 whether it's male or female so all of those would be equally as likely it's the combinations that weight them differently and it's the combinations that made these uh, three eighths instead of one eighth and because of the probabilities of success or failure so for instance having one one girl would mean that you would have a probability of girls 50 percent and then probability of two that are not girls would be two boys, which is 50% and 50%. So it's 50% of 50% of 50%, which is one eighth. So all these probabilities are one eighth. It's the combinations of, of them that, that change. And so um, the, in, the same thing is going on over here where NCX is called the combination. So how many combinations can you choose zero? There's only one way you could have zero females, right? Which would be all males. How many ways uh, out of three can you choose one female? Um, which could be either one of the orders. So the female could be the oldest, she could be the, the middle child or the youngest. How many ways out of, out of three can you choose two? Well, choosing two is the same thing as choosing one, right? Or not choosing one. It's exactly the same. So those are going to be symmetric, which is kind of cool. And then uh, out of three, well, how many ways can you choose all three? Well, there's only one way to do that, which would be uh, having all, all three females in that case. All right. So the binomial expansion is related to, uh, it's really the same thing as Pascal's triangle, which maybe you've seen uh, this triangle before. It's formed by uh, the first diagonals are all going to be one, and then you add these two, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, three plus three is six, uh, one plus three is four, etc. So you have the diagonals are always one. The next row is going to be counting numbers. The next row after that is what we call triangular numbers, which I'll show you a little bit about tomorrow. It's kind of cool. So the binomial expansion says if we have a binomial, like bi, as in two nomials or two uh, terms being added together, then if we take it to the power of n, uh, this the resultant coefficients will be, a, your binomial expansion will be a part of Pascal's triangle. So for instance, if we take a plus b to the zeroth power, this will tell us what row we are on the Pascal's triangle, which is anything to zero power is one. So the coefficient would be one. Now if we take it to the first power, it's gonna be one a plus one b, which is one and one. It's the next row, the, or the first row, because you start at zero, but, Anyway, and then if we square it, we get a squared plus 2ab plus uh, a squ plus b squared. That should be b squared. Sorry about that. Um, and then notice your coefficients are 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1. Okay, cool. And the next one is 3. We have blah, blah, blah. You get it. Uh, notice our coefficients are 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. Huh. And then to the fourth power, we do 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. One four six four one. So kind of cool. Pascal's triangle shows up in all over the place in math. It's uh, really really cool. We actually see it um, in in other ways as well with the central limit theorem in statistics, which we'll talk about again later because that's related to the binomial. Uh, but essentially, you can also write combinations of NCX, uh, where n is the row that we're on, so the the zeroth row, the first row, second row, third row, and then the column is going to be uh, which which term we are here. So. For instance, if we want to say out of three, choose one, that would be the third row. And then the first one would be um, would be the this one right here, because you start with zero and this would be one. So out of three, choose zero would be one. Out of three, choose one would be three. Out of three, choose two would be three combinations. And out of three, choose three, there's only one combination for that as well. So that's really the example that we had. If I go back, uh, one, three, three, one. <laughs> That's the exact same thing we had, uh, row three, so zero, one, two, three, and then column zero, one, two, three. Kind of cool. Uh, and they'll always be symmetrical as we can see with Pascal's triangle as well, which is kind of cool. So, wow, such good stuff here. Uh, that's pretty much what I just talked about there. So the sample space of the combinations, one, three ways to have one. Out of three, choose two, there's three ways to do that. And out of three, choose three, there's, there's uh, one, one way to do that. So one, three, three, one, one, three, three, one row column binomial expansion. Boom, mind blown. So cool. Awesome stuff. So, um, you can read that. It's not really that big of a deal. There's a lot of nastiness going on with the combinations and the way that you actually can 
put the combinations uh, with the factorial and stuff like that. Pretty much we're just going to be putting into the calculator. <laughs> so you don't need to know all this stuff, but I just kind of want to show you, uh, I guess, kind of where it comes from. So the mean the, with the expected value uh, would be n times p. Uh, that will hopefully make sense when we do some examples because right now it's all theory. But um, and then standard deviation is just n times p times q, and then we take the square root of all that. So this will be important to use standard deviation instead of the the uh, geometric, which I don't even remember what it was because it's not even that. Okay, it's the square root of p over q squared. Anyway, but we don't use that because it's always skewed to the right. But binomial distributions with a large enough sample will actually be nearly normal, which is kind of cool. And we'll talk about. Uh, when that works uh, in two, two more lessons. All right, so on this one, we actually wanna look at simulating the binomial distribution. So the binomial is basically saying, out of a certain number of trials, how many successes are we expecting? So let's look at, uh, look for the LeBron James card again. And I, I've circled the zero and ones, those are representing the LeBron James, like our assignments were yesterday, because uh, 20% of the cards were LeBron. So these are already grouped in five. So let's do a trial set of five. So let's say we go to the store, we buy five boxes of cereal. Uh, how many LeBron James cards would we expect to get? So that's what we're gonna be simulating here, the binomial. So out of five, how many successes? Um, and so the first set of five, we didn't have any. So we would put a tally on that one for zero LeBrons. The next set of five, our next, our next uh, trial here, uh, would have two of them, so we put a mark on two, and then zero again, uh, zero again, zero again, two again, zero, so it's fifth, and then one, one, zero, two, zero, you kind of hopefully see what we're doing, then another zero, that's where I was at last, two again, and then one, and then two, well, this is actually kind of fun. So that was the last one I was at. Okay, so we're right here. If you want to finish that, it shouldn't take you very long. Like I could have done it, but you know, don't want to make the videos too long. But after we get the frequencies, uh, I think there is 40 of them all together. So divide these numbers that you get divided by 40. That'll give you your estimate probability. And then on the last row here, this is the, what the binomial PDF, what your probabilities should be. So your probabilities, as we increase the sample size, right, the empirical probability will kind of settle to it. Uh, and we should approach these but I mean, we're only doing 40, uh, a simulation of 40, which is really small, but we'll see how it works. Uh, at the end, we're actually going to continue our simulation from geometric probabilities and see kind of where we get to uh, on that one. So this is what it should look like. Uh, this is the, you can actually, uh, if you Google search binomial distribution applet, they're from the University of Iowa, I'll also put the link just like I did for the geometric one. Uh, the binomial is actually more helpful because the X axis is not off. It's starting at zero and that's actually acceptable for us. But you'll see that's exactly uh, what it should look like for our binomial distribution. Um, and then go ahead and graph yours out in comparison to this one, just like we did with the geometric and see how close our simulation was to what the values should have been, which is kind of cool. Um, so on this one, our expected value. So um, in this case, our probability of success of finding LeBron was 20%, right? So let's say that instead of buying five, we bought uh, 15 boxes. So the question is, what? how many LeBron would we expect? Well, that's gonna be 15 times 0.2, which is three. So the center of our distribution would be at three. But then the next question, are we more likely to, to instead of, we would expect on average three, but is it more likely for us to have two or to have four? to have one more than expected or one less than expected. Well, if you look at our probability, it's 0.2. That's less than 0.5, right? Which means each time we're more likely to have something that's not LeBron than something that is. So having one more than expected would be rarer than rarer <laughs> than having one less than expected. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can tell whether or not your distribution will be skewed to the left or to the right based on the, the probability of success. Is it more likely to have one less than expected or one more than expected? So the only time that the binomial distribution will be truly symmetric is whenever, at least with small samples, is whenever the, um, well, it'll be, the, the skewedness kind of goes away because of the central limit theorem. But anyway, as sample sizes increases. But it, it, the only way it would be completely symmetric, regardless of the sample size, is if your probability of success was uh, 50% like flipping a coin. The, that distribution, binomial distribution, would always be symmetric regardless of our sample size. 
Um, okay, so what would the mean be? We would expect on average three and the standard deviation, we just do basically n times p times q, which is the expected value of three times the probability of failure, which is uh, 0.8 times three, and then we take the square root of it. Anyway, you can do that if you if you want. I'm just too lazy. All right, so let's get into some assignments uh, problems here. We're doing really well on time, actually. About 8% of males are colorblind. Um, so that's we're obviously more likely to find uh, to have one less than we expect and one more because it's less than 50%, by the way. Our researcher needs some colorblind subjects for an experiment and begins checking potential subjects. What's the probability that she won't find anyone colorblind among the first four men she checks? So out of the first four, we're doing a trial set of four. Um, what's the probability we get zero? So there's, we want to use, uh, we're not looking for the first success, by the way. So this is not a geometric model. And we can't, we can't do the geometric model for five, right? So what's the probability that we have our first success on the fifth one? Because that's not what they're asking. They're asking that what's the probability we just don't have a success in the first four. Now, we already know how to calculate this. Like traditionally, it would just be 0.9 two to the fourth power means failure, 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 failure. Um, and so you got your answer there. But how would we do this with a geometric? So out of four, we want to know how many times zero. So that's going to be a binomial distribution. Are we doing the CDF or the PDF? Do we want to know one specific outcome or a range of values? Well, in this case, we just want to know one specific outcome, which would be the binomial PDF. Um, and then whenever we put it in the calculator, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So we go to second variable, so distribution menu, go to the very bottom, and then here's our geometric and geometric PDF and CDF. Go up to binome PDF and binome CDF. We're gonna do the PDF. So out of four trials, probability of success was 0 0.08, and we wanna know uh, what's the probability didn't find any, so that would be zero, and then hit paste, and there we go. So that's gonna be 71.63, um, which is pretty much what we got here. Let me go ahead and pull up the uh, web page real quick. So I can show you how we can graph this out because it's actually going to be pretty helpful. All right, so I pulled up the web page. Uh, it's again from the University of Iowa. Thank you, Matt Bogner. All right, so out of n, n is going to be out of um, yeah, they said out of four. Uh, the probability of success we want to do uh, 0 0.08. Okay, so this is going to be our, our, our graphed out distribution, and you can actually hover over them to see those specific probabilities. We want to know the probability of zero, um, zero out of four, which is right there. That's really fast. And this is actually better than doing, um, I don't know what's going on there, but it's actually better than just putting it in the calculator because you can actually visualize it as, you know, as it goes. Uh, you can see what happens as we increase the sample size, by the way. Oh, wow. Huh. That's not so heavily skewed anymore. What's going on here? Is this the central limit theorem in play? Wow, Mr. Murphy, that's some cool stuff. Yeah, I got some cool stuff to show you for the rest of the year. Um, if you're interested why it all of a sudden became uh, like a normal curve. But anyway, we can also still do um, curves, uh, area under the curves. So we could find like a CDF, which is uh, for zero or one. It will add them together and stuff like that. So if you actually want to do your assignment with uh, the binomial distribution, you need to know how to put it in the calculator too. But man, I wouldn't blame you. It's really cool, especially because you got your iPad. You can you know do it on your iPad as well. All right, so the binomial CDF, uh, when we put it in, uh, like if we we're putting this in for like the AP test, uh, it would be the number trials four comma point eight comma there. You're also going to want to like define the, the terms because they're not sure what calculator you're using. So you'd say X is equal to four comma uh, P is equal to point zero eight comma um, and then no N is equal to four X is equal to zero. OK, what's the probability the first colorblind man will be the sixth person checked? So uh, we're looking for a first success. That's actually the geometric. Uh, geometric model and the first one will be the six so it's not a range of values it's just gonna be a geometric PDF uh, the six person is the first one so we'll put it in the calculator first then we can see how it, how it works because it kind of gives us some hints there so second distribution we're going to, go to the very bottom geometric PDF probability of success of 0 0.08 we want to know the six person is the first success so that's how we put it in the calculator so 0 0.08 and six and then our answer there was um, 5.27 percent What's the probability that she finds someone who's colorblind before checking the 10th man? So that means our success is before the 10th. So 
that would be geometric CDF, cumulative density function. So our first success happens somewhere before the 10th, which would be up to nine. So uh, we're gonna do geometric CDF uh, all the way up to nine, so 0 0.08 to nine. And let me pull up my calculator here real quick. So second distribution, normal geometric CDF, uh, 0 0.08 up to nine. And that'll give us 52% uh, essentially. All right, on average, how many men would a researcher expect to have to check before finding someone who's colorblind? All right, so that's just gonna be one over P or uh, P to the negative one power. So um, I'm going to put this in the calculator, 0 0.08 to the negative 1 power, which is going to give us 12 and a half. Okay, 12 and a half. An Olympic archer is able to hit the bullseye 80% of the time. So same one we've been doing. Uh, she shoots six arrows. So what's the probability she gets exactly four out of the six? So this isn't looking for our first success or anything. This is the binomial distribution. So it's going to be... Um, yeah, binomial PDF, we're looking exactly for a four, not a range of values like on the other two. So our, let's just put it right in the calculator, I guess. Um, so second variables, go to the binomial PDF. Out of six trials, probability of success is 0.8, and we want to know exactly four. Okay, good to go. She gets at least four bullseyes. You know what, let me actually pull up the uh, web page and we'll do it this way uh, instead. So we're gonna do it, it's just so much easier to visualize it. All right, so that's gonna be at a point eight. And okay, so four, but we didn't want a range of values this time, we want the exact. Okay, so that's how we find that value. Isn't this nice, because you can see, uh, on the average, it'll even tell you the expected value is 4.8, so we'd expect 4.8. Uh, bullseyes out of six which would mean it's closer to five right and also it would be skewed to the left right because it's more likely that we'd have one more than expected than one less than they expected which is actually true uh here as well um so kind of cool but again if i you know crease this up here then wow wow that's a bell curve wow just because the sample size grew that's so cool i know you're so intrigued all right, so that's the first question. The next question was, I think at least, let me pull that up. Yeah, uh, probably she gets at least four bullseyes. So anytime we see at least, uh, you can do the complement. Um, well, actually in this case, so at least four bullseyes means four, five, or six, right? And so our we're using the CDF, but our CDF only measures from the left. Um, so we would want to measure to the left up to three and then subtract that from one and that'll leave us with the four, five, and six remaining. So let me show you uh, how to do that in the calculator and I'll show you why we're doing it in just a second. Okay, so binomial uh, CDF, we're going to do out of 6.8 and we're going to go up to three and then we're going to subtract that from one. So one minus that will give us our answer here. And then let me show you why we're doing this. Here. So we want to know four, five, or six. So uh, it's it's actually kind of nice because I can just do it here. Oh, wow, it's nice. Okay, but if I wanted to do, our, our calculator won't let us do, go from the right bound. It only goes measures from a cumulative density function from the left bound. Uh, and so if I do four, it's going to include the four, but I want, I want four or more, at least four, right? So that's why we changed it to an x value of three. And then now it's going to, that's how we got that part, which is a CDF going all the way up, all the PDFs going up to three. And then when we subtract that from one, that's how we get the value of four or more, which again, we had earlier, if we go back to here, there we go, which is that value. Okay, cool, man. I really like this pretty sweet. All right. She gets at most four bullseyes. So that means no more than four. So that's a CDF going all the way up. So again, binomial CDF going all the way up to four, including four. Uh, so we actually had that pretty, pretty easily. Um, let's do it in the calculator real quick. You know, I'm actually so lazy. I'm just going to copy here and then change this to a four. Okay, cool. So there it is. Let me show you uh, graphically what's going on here. So we're doing uh, CDF all the way up to four. Boom, there it is. How nice. Okay, more errors. Consider the archer from there. How many bullseyes are we expecting to make? Well, that's basically the 
the number of trials times the probability of success, which is, uh, apparently I forgot to make that one fade out, uh, 6 times 0 0.8, which, oh, they're all going to be not fading out, which is 4.8. So on average, 4.8. And they actually tell you that on the binomial distribution as well. With what standard deviation? So just multiply n times p times q, then take the square root. So that's not that big of a deal either. Uh, when we do that, we get uh, 0.98 for our standard deviation. So centered at 4.8 with standard deviation of basically one shot. So 68% of the time we'd expect her to make with between 3.8 shots and 5.8 shots, which would be uh, roughly four to six shots. <laughs> kind of cool. What is the binomial distribution? Wait, that's if it's appropriate to use a normal model, but that eh, we got some conditions we got to explain in two days. So wait for that. Uh, what's a binomial distribution? Is it symmetric? No, it's not going to be symmetrical because it's uh, the probability is greater than 50%, it's, or it's not equal to 50%, so it's gonna be skewed to the left because it's more likely you're gonna have one more than expected than one less. Uh, so because the probability is equal to, of success is equal to 0.8, which is greater than five, it's skewed towards the left. So she keeps shooting till she gets a bullseye, uh, geometric, so how long till the first success, how many shots will it take? Uh, we already found that, uh, or no, we didn't. It's just the uh, reciprocal of 0.8, which is 1.25. So we would expect her to only have to shoot 1.25 shots before she makes her first bullseye. Because of course she's likely to hit it on the first one, right? All right? I think that's it. Yeah, so we graphed out and did a simulation for the geometric model yesterday. And so I'm gonna have you do the next uh, number of trials on uh, number three, you'll see at the very end, the bottom. And then add those from our first simulation to our second simulation and then recalculate and see how close you are this time to the actual true geometric model and so it should um, and this is actually from that and then all the rest kind of add up to that so i can add, put them together but uh, it should be uh, closer it should be closer as we increase the sample size i mean it, it's not guaranteed but um, it should be all right so that's it uh, didn't do too bad on time either. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys. Can't wait till I see you guys.